I am tired, I gotta say. I uh, haven't done that many events since the pandemic, right? I've, I've done some online stuff, right? But I didn't go anywhere. I was like, no, I got offered lots of things. I was like, I'm gonna stay home. I did Red Bull, that was fun. I was like, all right, it's Arc Revo time. I'm gonna do Arc Revo. This is the time, I'm gonna go do it. And then I got in bed at midnight. Our call time was 9.30. You know, it's a little warm. All of a sudden, I started getting a headache. I got, the, I got chills. My body is just destroyed. I s didn't sleep at all. It like started creeping. It was like one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. I was like, you know, I have a feeling I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> I tested for COVID before the event. I didn't have it then. I tested after a couple of times and I don't have it now. Like I didn't test for it. So I'm not really sure what it is, to be honest with you. It could have just been a regular flu. Yeah, I'm not sure. We had a rehearsal. I did the whole thing the whole day. It was great. I was like, I can't wait. It's going to be tight. And then, yeah, I got destroyed. Yeah, James is a hero. I knew that James was going to do the restream. So I was like, maybe James will be down. And then James just rolled up and was like, all right, I got this. After they told me, like, hey, even if we couldn't find a replacement, like, you can't come in because, you know, COVID stuff anyway, so we'll figure it out. I was like, all right, I'm going to sleep. So I woke up, like, right when the show was starting. I watched, like, the last game or two of the first match, and then they were like, all right, we're going to a break. And then I was like, okay, how long is the break? And then it was, like, six minutes or whatever, and I was like, wow, it's kind of long. And then I woke up and then Hotashi was holding the trophy above his head like this. And then I sort of started drifting in and out of sleep. And then I was, it was like Ringe versus Hotashi. And I was like, I'm having a fever dream. I mean, I'm so sad because I was like so excited to do commentary, you know? And I was like, this show is going to be a piece of cake. I was like so ready. There's only one other time I could think of since I started commentating like six years ago that I got sick and couldn't do a show. And the show I couldn't do was something like pretty small. It was like I did the first two days of a show while sick or something. And then the last day, there was like one block I had left. And I was like, hey, can someone take this? And then someone did it. And it wasn't a big deal. Anyway, are you guys all ready to check out? Ow. <laughs> it's not that long of a, of a broadcast, right? The director's cut is like two hours. Yeah, there's not that much in here. This tournament was really fun to watch. I really liked how the groups broke down, particularly because this matchup, I mean, you know, if you were paying attention before this, Hotashi was doing a lot of prep work for Geo, right? I think he expected Days to be here. And this is a, a character that has traditionally given him some trouble. And I think a lot of Nago players don't love this matchup. They always say like Geo's buttons are stubby compared to other characters or like oh yeah you know she doesn't have that much range on her normals except like i think that's so wrong let's say her her 5h goes like this far right she has a dash that takes her half screen instead of the normal going like this far it's like the normal goes like this far the character's ability to whiff punish and attack you is so much better than what people represent it as it's a very strange thing to say you know i'm like i don't really understand that idea behind this character I've, she's never really been that way IMO and in this matchup like I don't know I think she is totally capable of whip punishing and dealing with Nago better than a lot of other characters actually to be honest with you this is a lot of blood counter hit 5h the thing is too about challenging with 5h is that 5h is a 10 frame move that has a really high reward on counter hit and it's extremely good to swing with it has a great hitbox as well one thing i was going to mention that i love about daze's play is this too the jump rising fd and then challenge with jump h jump d or whatever air string you want to do right he does this a ton i think this is so good this is something that like you have to keep in your pressure because it forces people to want to try to 6p or like anti-air with whatever air throw whatever they want to do and when they're focusing on this, you can really get away with approaching on the ground way more or dash 2S or like dash up throw or whatever you want to do. I think incorporating this is really good. I like it more than air dash. I think air dash is way easier to deal with than uh, what's it called? Charge D or super? Yeah, you're dead. Uh, it's like way easier to deal with than uh, air dash is way easier to deal with than the jump in. So I think the jump is like way better. It's harder to challenge. You have to be way earlier to deal with that. That was great to deal with Fukio as well. A backdash that time. You see how he tried the rising jump attack? This is why you have DE too. The rising jump attack again. He tries it right here. And Hotashi challenges with 5k. But the FD means that not only is, is day safe, right? But there's immediate pushback. And then you can just 
you know, you go back down to the ground and you reset. It's not so bad for you, right? You just jump FD and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Tries the DP there. DP is quite good against this character and also the other character in this group, Soul. Because, um, what's it called? Safe jump? YRC so you don't have to deal with the BRC mix up. I'll get back to the DP point in a second. No challenge. Oh, and the back dash on that doesn't kill. That was a great backdash, and yeah, that was smart too. If this is good recognition that one Fukio, not really that scary here, you know. When when Nago players try this approach behind the clone from full screen like this, if they're gonna like double Fukio or whatever, like I mean, she has a great button to challenge this with and stuff. You know, so you're chilling. But the point I was gonna make about DP is that any character whose primary pokes are not like low pokes, like they hit high up. Her DP is really good against it. It's a really good threat. And Nago is, is kind of like susceptible to that besides his 2S. And so is Soul. So you'll see it a lot in the set with Symbolist, I'm sure, that the DP is like a really good threat because of that option. Any move that hits high up like this is a weird thing to burst. Yeah. That's a bad burst. It's it's hard to burst against Nago when you're that high. His close flash will sort of automatically burst. And he always has the threat of Fukio as well, right? Again, DP... He just wants to hit like his five frame uh like check here right he just wants to do this and dp smokes it it also has great damage too like you get a lot off of this especially if you can carry to the corner got the back dash and that's a great pickup off the back dash by the way to see the back dash and instead of doing like 5k 2 and 4k to like actually just do the jump route off of it same thing there hotashi with the hero burst yeah, you don't love to see it. I think you, you might have to hold that. Ow. How the hell? 2D smoking Beyblade there feels so bad. Yeah, 2K 2D actually caught Nago backdash. You know, Hotashi likes the backdash as it's not surprising. His like character has such a good backdash. But the delays from days are really catching the backdash so much. Not dead. Yeah. Like, the delays that he's doing are so good to catch that, and I think it's become, like, one of those things where challenging actually might start to be better. Like, wake-up throw, immediate throw might be better. Because if they're going to delay... You know, if your opponent's delaying to catch that, you got to do something different. Yeah. It's not... It's kind of rare that pokes are good against Beyblade. It depends on the kind of poke it is. You've got to respect the super, yeah. Not much you can do there. You sort of... She gets a free wake-up option because of it. Damn, backdash again. Backdash, again, that was three in a row. And the same situation, right? 2K2D beating the Beyblade. It's tough to take control in mid-range as, as Nago in some places if the Geo player places everything they do well and they're as smothering as days while backdash again. I was expecting an offensive uh, burst right there from Hotashi actually to keep the corner, but maybe he was looking for a th uh, burst bait. This hurts. Damage is pretty good. Next hit will be like wall break super. That's what I mean. That is not easy to anti here, by the way. This jump FD, early jump H here, it's probably 5P, I'm going to guess. Yeah, his 5P just gets destroyed. And his 5P is an excellent anti here, by the way. It hits a lot. I feel like almost any other character here is going to probably get hit by this 5P. Yeah, he's just going to get melted. Dead. Yep. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Geo's damage is absurd. Yeah, her 2D is so good. Look at the whip. On. This is what I meant about her moves. People talk about her buttons being stubby. Like, they say, like, oh, she's got, like, such stubby buttons. There's not that many characters that, like, from this far away, just, like, clean smoke a far slash. Like, by the way, very fast reaction from Daze. Daze is so good. But this whip punish, not that many characters already like that. 10 frame, 5 age to whip punish. Yeesh. And Days is so good too. That's the thing. I, whenever I watch Days, I constantly just think like, damn. Not only is Geo a strong character, right? But I just think like, you know, Days is so good, and the ideas that he has, I think, are so good. Again, risking DP against a character like Nago or Soul. Anything, anybody who doesn't have a really strong low poke to to crush it, I think it's pretty good, especially because the punishes are often not that scary, particularly if you have high blood as Nago, right? Trying to bait throw there. That whip punish again. I mean, you really cannot get away. Yeah, you really cannot get away with that. Look at this. 
you know, this is like where most characters like a whiff on a shear is going to be like Soul's going to do dashing 6H or something, right? Or like Kai can do dash stun dipper or there's options you have a look at this dashing 5H. Her neutral and ability to whiff punish is so good because of her dash. It really gives her strong options to deal with situations like that. I love Tab Dust RC there too. It was really well played. I think everything about that was super well played from Days. It's saying Days winner with this face. Can I just say, this is pretty good. Oh man, the way he's shaking his head gets me good. All right, next match. Is it Hotashi Symbolist? Yeah. You got no microphone that you can use, soul bad guy. It's interesting because I think if you're Symbolist here, you know, you can play Happy Chaos in this matchup. I know he was working on that character. And uh, Symbolist Soul is really good. Like, this is the comfort pick for sure. This matchup is, it can be pretty rough, I think. And Hotashi is really good at uh, scrambling against this character, I think. The biggest thing about Hotashi in general, his largest strength is comfort with his character in weird situations and also forcing a pace and just like a set of scenarios and scrambles that it's unlikely you will have the raw, like, uh, experience in to deal with in the same way that he does it's very challenging i think you know it's very very challenging i think consistently this is a lot of blood early but i guess it gets reduced by the far slash and stuff too damn the late cancel one thing about this that you're gonna see a lot is the late backdash from symbolist symbolist likes delayed backdash a lot against the close slash pressure and it gets it gets smoked reacts to the burst not that much damage, but it's a really bad position to be. It removes a lot of the blood. You notice a lot of the IBs in this are quite important as well. A lot of the IBs in this are quite import important as well. Soul, when he IBs against Nago, has some new options to challenge against some of his pressure. Common burst spot. Most people burst there when the DP is about to hit so that they don't get baited on the 5k. Normally, they actually bait after the first hit. But uh, or burst after the first hit, but it depends. So notice the the far slash there into the five age. Symbolist actually has a really good response to that planned out, and you'll see it here in a minute. Mario, what up? So this is one of those things that's like a, clearly a very practiced response. You know this is coming. You you block two ass, five age comes. You clash with the DP, and then you use the clash to go into vortex to get the punish. This is one of those things that's really cool. And it's like a really good response. But the problem with it is that it's not something you'll get away with that often. And the reason is, is that what will happen is Hotashi will start to do 2S 5H and then just FD, hold FD on 5H, right? So th this is a cool response, but you have very limited opportunity. Once you do it once, every other time Hotashi is going to like FD or, or do something like just cancel it. But the first time, you know, I, you just send it. It's unfortunate that there's a drop there too because that was probably your time to get Vortex and then get the combo and do whatever you wanted to do. Otashi just built a lot of blood. I think one thing about this matchup that's important too is that um, in general against Nago, 6H is actually very challengeable. This move is quite challengeable. The thing is, is that it's cancelable, right? So it's actually unsafe on block. It's like very negative. But, you know, he could always cancel into back Fukio and make it plus, or he can cancel into Beyblade or whatever it is. So recognizing when the blood is high and you should challenge this move is pretty important um, in general. You'll see it later on. Uh, you'll see a bit more of it, but that was great movement, actually, from Symbolist to get this position. In this position, too, this is a position I've talked a lot about, Soul versus Nago. You sort of have to stand at, like, this range outside of his 5H. And then just wait. If you commit too early, uh, you run into an RPS that can be pretty unfavorable because if 5H hits, you just explode. And his 2S will beat a lot of your approach options. But there is, in general, a basic RPS to think about with Soul and Nago, which is that Nago's 2S is really hard for Soul to deal with a lot of times to counter poke against. However, 5H is very easy to whiff punish. If you just try to like run in, 2S is going to smoke you, right? So. You know, you kind of have to wait and see what the option Nago is going for. Because 2S is like, as you see, 2S is really hard to deal with. Yeah, I can't punish because of the BRC. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to deal with there. 2S is really hard to stop for Soul. And for most characters in the game, right? It's not just Soul, but in Soul is on the screen here. It's, it's very tough for most characters to deal with as a poke. 
So you kind of have to run up and wait on that and then harass it from farther away with like a 6S or something else. As opposed to his 5H where you can like whip punish it and actually come up with something. Man, that challenge was so good. Gets the job done. 6S is great there. Once you get the whiff, also notice how often Hotashi backdashes on far slash, by the way. Just watching this set, notice like how many times he blocks one far slash and then just commits to uh, what's it called right away. Yeah, 2K, you get the pickup off of it. There's a lot of cool little things that you see here from both, both of them. So notice that in this case, the blood is quite high. So in this matchup, like all Soul is waiting for is this whiff so he can run into whiff punish, right? Then Hotashi just walks up, and as a soul player, you're just waiting, right? You're like, okay, he's gonna whiff 5H, then I can or 2H, and I can run in and do whatever I want to do. So you just walk back and you wait. Hotashi just walks up and does far slash. Great choice, right? Because this is, you know, you can't whiff punish this if it hits, it's on block or whatever, and it prevents you from doing 5H or whatever things. He gets the last hit here. Notice the little things in this setup. 6K. This moves you forward without spending blood. Right, so he does 6k so that he can get close to Soul without having to spend blood on Fukio. Then he does Fukio back, 6h, just in case Soul swings or tries anything, right? So it's like a very safe way to navigate forward and then try to, to beat something, right? I like that choice a lot. Blood is getting pretty high here for Hotashi. He, yeah, I think if you're Symbolist, you just wait for the dash up. Mm -hmm. when, when Naga's blood is like quite high like that, I think... His, his options are much more linear, so you just kind of stay on the ground and wait for the um, the dash most of the time. And the back dash is pesky to deal with. Blood's going to come down here really low. You can actually challenge that too. I think that's something that Hotashi's done quite a, long, a lot, which is just... That was a good air dash. Which is just raw 6H and then nothing after. That's a missed EP probably at the end, but we take those. That's the nice thing is like, sometimes you just take the credit. You try to do DP there, you get 6H, and it looks like you just wanted the hard knockdown. You're like, I'll take it. I like IB DP that time too, because last time it was IB 5K. I like the neutral jumping too. One thing that's important for Soul in this match is you need to jump actually. Uh, and you need to jump like, in, in empty jump range. That is like a really important aspect of this matchup. That sucks. I know that feeling. Simplest. I'm right there with you. Remember when I mentioned earlier that like Hotashi blocks far slash and then he backdashes a lot? You say, okay, you're going to backdash Hotashi. You think you're so cool. Let me just 6S you. And he fucking hits 5K. What are the odds? He backdashed like 18 times. Symbolist says, I know, right? I When I saw that, I was like, ooh, I feel you. That's a punish, actually. I think if Hotashi's faster, that combos too. He, he could have killed here, maybe. This is uh, minus five. It's a five frame move. I don't know why. But. <laughs> Empty lower. Oh, missed the setup. Unfortunate. You kind of need that situation to go right for you there when you're so low on life. Yeah, now you got an FD so you don't get chipped from the normals and everything. He's going to pop or get close to it. Yeah, not quite pop. Nice pickup. The unfortunate thing is you don't have a safe jump here. And he has full meter, so you have to respect the super. Yeah, that's the problem is like so you don't get a safe jump there against fast moves. And he has super, so... There's not a lot of good options. You could like run up and gold burst it, <laughs> I guess. Not a lot of good choices there, right? It's just run up, block the super, then force into the RPS, then try to live, live that. And... Kind of rough. There's not a lot of good choices there. Oh, Lord. He did double Beyblade. Oh, no. I do like that challenge, though, because I think a throw, like whether it was commander or not, was pretty likely. Double IB. That late backdash is getting clipped a lot here. It's a rough thing to deal with because you block close slash and you're scared of command throw, right? So I understand that idea. Ah, uh, that burst. It all worked out. 
You can DP the super, but Hotashi could always cancel it early, for instance. On that last one. That's a whip punish. I don't blame Symbolist for not committing here, because this doesn't always work. Like, if you're a non-soul player, you may be like, why don't you just ban it Revolver here, right, as a whip punish? 6S in a BR, like, the first hit's not going to hit, but the second hit might hit if you do it immediately. But it also might whiff. If it whiffs, you're fucked. So... This is like kind of a weird range for Soul to whip punish because his 6S is not always going to lead into damage. You have to like whip punish with like 6H or something, which doesn't give you that much frame advantage. It's like a weird range for Soul to whip punish. Uh, try to IB and do 5K that time. Hatashi instead goes for clone. Oh no. I like the 5k. Oh, tried to go for the nasty little uh, reset. That works out. Backdash again. It's so hard to deal with. Nago, the reason his backdash is so good is the frame data on it is excellent, but also the range it puts you at after is like incredible for Nago. You know what I mean? Like, that sucks. That is a, an unfortunate drop. It puts you in like the perfect position for him to challenge you. This right here is supposed to be close slash and then clean it DP, but I think it's really good that he saw that it was far slash and then doesn't do DP after. It's very easy to not see that and then be in a bad spot because of it. Man, yeah, that range is so scary against Nago, to be honest with you. Second hit hit. Oh, no. Oh, that hurts. That combo could have got quite close to killing. Oh, and that sucks. That was OTG 5S. But, I mean, you know. I, oh, that was pretty good. That backdash worked out that time. Trying to beat the burst. Oh. It, he burst after the RC, correct? I don't think he burst before the RC. Let me look. You can tell because during the RC, there's still, you know, it's not gone yet. So he burst like right after. So the RC was to bait it, but then he hadn't committed to it before the burst. The timing was just after. That's a, a punish. His 6H is like minus is 17, 16, 17, something like that. Important punish. You can also 6H it at a lot of ranges, too. I do like Gunflame that time, actually. I think you can harass Nago with Gunflame a little bit off some of your cancels when he's lower on blood. Running. Yeah, this is your chance. There's a. This is a classic... This is a great example of what the neutral is like in this matchup. So when Nago has high blood like this, right? The main thing he wants to do is hit 5H because it's a good button and it goes far. The problem is if you miss the 5H, Soul can run in and whip punish. Symbolist is a little, a little late on the whip punish here. So he just runs in and challenges with far slash, right? So that's like the basic RPS of this matchup when you're full screen there. So notice the next time we reset to the same position, instead of hitting 5H... Hotashi just like, okay, I'm just going to do 2S, 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 2S. Because 2S will be the same option that he just did. And also, it's from this range, you're not really doing anything about it, right? There's nothing to be done about it. Instead, now Soul can initiate before Nago, and he can run in and do like 6S or... Yeah, you see what I mean? He can attack the space instead of Nago. Then what you want to do here is backdash, let Nago recommit to 5H, and then when he recommits to 5H, then you run in and do the same thing again. Or 2H, you see what I mean? So it's that that's the idea behind it is when he's doing 5H or 2H Nago, you can't really attack. But if he switches, then you can attack with something else instead. That's kind of like how the matchup goes when you're high on blood. So in, like right here, it's the same idea. Soul can run in and challenge a bit because he's not using 5H. But if 5H is going to come out, then you have to respect it again and slow it down. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to punish because of BRC. It's hard. It's hard there. Oh no, that is so bad. Trying to beat the burst. You hate to see it. That was definitely a Symbolist round. Yeah, 5H whiffs. I remember the first time that happened to me in the patch where they nerfed Soul 5S, and I was like, you know, this is going to be bad. 
interrupting the IV. New symbolists would try to I was like, this is going to be this 5H not hitting consistently after far slash now. This is going to be bad. It's like my least favorite thing they changed about Soul, actually. Oh, he is BR. No. Yeah, it's it's uh, just Soul's pressure is a bit more inconsistent. I like that Hotashi's trying to 5P and 6P a bit to beat 6S. Tough to stop. Well played there from Hotashi. I think actually this is an interesting group because I think actually... Um, Overall, it's a group that if I was Symbolist, I would be like, damn it. I wouldn't really want to fight against either of these characters. Yeah, I wish 5H had a bit more range so it comboed more consistently after 5, 5S. That would be nice. Or what, like, I just, I don't care what the change is. I just wish it was more consistent. But yeah, I think this matchup uh, can be quite, quite annoying to uh, slow down as well. Days plays this matchup really well, I think. Yeah, one thing about Soul is that characters who have good low, low uh, hitting attacks tend to be pretty good against them, uh, because his primary pokes are all they all hit upper body, right? That was kind of slightly mitigated by the 2S changes, but Geo is a good example because her DP is really good at dealing with it, and her 2K and 2D are both really good at dealing with Soul's pressure. Important thing, like you may say, like why did he just get hit after blocking? Uh, whatever it's called, 5H here. Soul can punish 5H uh, with 5K, but he can also punish the Wolf Kick here, doing 4K with 5K. So she kind of has to play like an RPS game without meter of like, do I cancel 5H into anything or do I not cancel or what do I do? You know what I mean? So as Soul, you have to guess like whether she's going to cancel it or not. It's certainly RPS that's in uh, Soul's favor. But it is something that you have to think about. Yeah, it's hard for her to time it such that Soul will not interrupt it. But yeah, you, you that scared it dude. Throwing Gunflame against this character. She's one of the scariest characters to use Gunflame against, honestly. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna explode. Oh. Dead anyway, it all worked out. Yeah, it's funny because I don't think Symbolus uh, is is like outclassed by either of the players. I think he is quite good. I just think these two matchups are, you know, not impossible to lose. And you're fighting against really strong players. I mean, somebody, you know, oh, the classic. That was a DP. Yeah, dead. Not much you can do there. He could just let her hit the ground there. He doesn't even have to combo if he doesn't want to, you know what I mean? Just chill. I think these are matchups that are easily losable compared to some other situations, right? I mean, it all depends on how it works out and who you, who you play in a bracket like this. So even though Symbolist is quite good, you know, yeah, that is the punish. You get the save jump after. Yeah, not much to be done there, right? Like, you, you know. You get safe jump. And even if she does empty, I think DP is so bad too, because even if she does empty air dash into throw, you get your DP thrown anyway. So you're just like, well, that's like. <laughs> IFD just gets negated there, but IFD is really good against her because a lot of Geo players will try and do close slash into 2S, and IFD is so good against that. Honestly, so is regular FD. I like that Daze is FDing that, by the way, too, because FDing that negates the mix-up for Soul. also. It makes the mix-up quite a bit worse. Nice, he was ready after the Fafner. Important thing here, when you have a move like this or a situation like this where you do meaty a Fafner or something, you can hit a button, like 5k probably here, such that even if Fafner whiffs, you're still okay, and it recovers fast enough. You can, like, OS the timing, actually. Oh, no. Daze's movement, actually... Let him escape the corner there. That was really good. Okay. Weird. DP whiff. Oh. I think the air button got eaten because of the slowdown. That's why I mentioned FDing, by the way. That situation is a good example. Notice that what Daze does here and why I think FDing after this is so good is that the mix up most soul players will do is like jump P, jump P, or like empty 2K or whatever they're going to do, right? So he's holding FD here. And then the jump he with, or is like FD, the second jump he hits, but notice because of the FD on that, uh, 
you don't get close slash here for soul, which is normally what he wants the combo there, right? So he's a little farther away and he doesn't get it. Yeah. You can adjust for it if you're soul. There's ways to deal with that. You can change the mix up entirely or change the timing. Oh. But yeah. It's it's why I think FD is pretty good there. And again, you know, it's not even necessarily a reaction kind of thing because Days has probably hit so many of those. I do like how Days plays this. Up. I think Days is so good. Every time I watch Days, I'm just like, man, what a good player. <laughs> Punish, yeah, because of the IV there. Without it, it wouldn't have reached. Good pick up. That was great awareness that the close slash caught back dash. Something actually important about this situation, the clash that just happened here too, just real quick. This clash here is interesting because if Soul BRs he, and she doesn't FD, he can actually counter hit her uh, from her 2D sometimes. So it's it's like kind of interesting off the clash. She's got to she's got to be cautious about it and look for FD. Not dead. Get the clean hit through the wall. That no life left. Simplest though with no meter. Yeah, that's the the fake into the the setup that time it's save jump into the throw setup. That might have been a DP. Wake up though. Punches are on the other side. Days does go for that sometimes where he like ends up doing an instant air dash and lands on the The thing about Soul is, you know, you got a lot of great things you can accidentally get instead of DP sometimes. But then he would do with 5k probably, so I'm not actually Vortex is great. There we go. There's that safe jump timing again. See, there's the punish. That's why the IB timing on her pressure is so important, right? For Soul in particular, it really lets him punish a lot of things that she wants to do on offense and how she structures her offense has to change a bit because of it. Oh lord, the active frames. Yeah, half the RC there to be safe. I love, man, I love that he just side switches like that. Daze does that a lot, and I think it's so good. I see him doing it even on punishes sometimes. Ouch, that hurts. Try to bait the burst. Wow, and not only did he not burst, but he was ready for it too. That was really good from Daze, actually. That's good. That's good. A knowledge of where soul players like to bait burst there too. It's really smart. There's a lot of reasons to miss inputs, honestly, in situations like this. Whether it's it's nerves, the studio's cold, like uh, what's it called? I I think that was a great burst bait too. Yeah, perfect. That was perfect. Everything about this was, I think, really well played. This is like, yeah, this is great. PRC, jump K, clean hit DP. This pressure, I love the close slash hitting. Double close slash and then jump FD into late air dash. Jump P, jump P, jump P, 5P. It was going to be 5P, 5P maybe even. And then burst safe the whole way. This is, I love that. Everything about that was great. Yeah, really, really smart. Everything about that was, was well done. Ah, caught backdash. Oof, that was a little scary, actually. If Symbolist, like, just having to mash 5k a little early or something. Oh, the gold burst? That's kind of a weird choice. Oh, well, you're dead. Kind of weird that he gold bursted there. I wonder what happened. Wow, that buffer was pretty good. <laughs> 5k from so far away like that. Oh, Lord, please help. Your risk is going to take a while to go down, too. Yeah, see? That sucks. Because even, even though you escaped earlier, you know, like, the risk immediately just went back up. And now you're just you just lost all that life because of it. Good chase. I mean, there's there's not much to be done here. Yeah, bursting there is so hard too because you know you, your opponent's gonna look for it, and also if you just like wing it with a burst and they block, you give it away for free. But you don't want to just not burst because then you just die. So it's like such a hard position to choose when to burst or not in. Oh, we'll take those. Challenge four frame. Her uh, her five B is excellent. Oh my god. 
Yeah, this is hard to deal with too. The other thing too is that challenging these as symbolists is a little weird because 5k is so bad on whiff and it's the thing you want to challenge these dash ups with. So as a soul player, you have to like condition yourself to instead challenge with like 5p or something or 2k, which are weirder buttons to hit, honestly. But it's it's way better than hitting 5k against Geo because hitting 5k and if it whiffs, you just die. Yeah. Not much to be done there. Dash up throw. Love to see it. I think Daze's neutral is so excellent. Like, he really just stands at the right space so often. And, like, yeah. I mean, he looks so comfortable standing right in front of Soul and just, like, dashing in and out. Like, you know, you see what I'm saying? Super here? Yeah, he's getting melted. It's so hard to deal with. When someone is this comfortable, yeah. His neutral is so clean. He stands at the perfect spot. He never gets clipped by, like, just big, like, random neutral hits that could kill him or anything. Like, he's just chilling. His whiff punishment is excellent. His spacing is perfect. Like, yeah, he just plays the matchup really well. And as Symbolist, like, I think he was making good choices in the matchup despite that. But the, uh, on defense, I think he should challenge with 5P a little bit more. It's hard to train your hands to... <clears throat> Challenge with 5P instead of 5K with Soul because you're so used to it. Dealing with that character on offense is hard. It's not an easy matchup to just like play defense in at all. Alrighty, so this is Group B. We're on to the other the other group now. So that was all of Group A. Flash versus Razo. I do love that Flash plays Kai, by the way. I think this is a great character choice for him. I'm sure a lot of people know Flash for playing, uh, what's it called? Axel, but I think oh, wow that recognition on the combo routing by the way not gonna work um the rest of that was great though I think the recognition on the combo route was great but I like Kai because this is a character that lets you control the pace of the match quite well right so I think it's like an important why is this highlighted hold on yeah I think this character really lets you control in neutral it's a uh, super useful for flash Look at the recognition on this hit gets the 2k 6h I think maybe would sacred edge work there or maybe it's because Leo's heavy. I'm not sure what the issue is. Uh, you weren't sure those buttons work in those arcade cabinets. Let me tell you. I can hear them, Joyce. Look at you. See the stun edge. They get all. I actually thought that was going to be an empty air dash and then block on the DP. There's so, there's a lot of things to think about during this too as well because I think um when you fight Leo you have to think so much about how they're RPSing on 5K 6K and like when they're willing to take risks with flash kicks in situations like that. Hmm. Yeah, not much to do there. You could you could burst, but I don't think you have to. Yeah, I think Razo is super smart and also like really a willing to oh, really willing to play like a bit more controlled than like you see some Leo players play, which is important. You know, it's a bit of both. I say that on wake up dash DP. My bad. My bad. I don't know why I said that. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Has to be done sometime, though. Breaks the wall. I don't know if I think breaking the wall is always worth it there, but it might not be a good way to end and get good Oki on the route. I think it's almost never worth it if it's not going to kill or you don't have super for the knockdown. Perfect. Prevent the burst here. That was, that was perfect. Because if you're Razo, you don't burst on close slash because, you know, that's where everybody baits the burst. So then uh, the super after is fantastic because RTL breaks the wall from anywhere. And there's not a lot you can do there, right? It's a really smart combo route from Flash, actually, just to just go right into super and prevent it. Constant forward dash, back dash to try to bait the uh, throws from Razo as well. Something that I like a lot about uh, his Kai play. Like, Flash is, like, willing to just chill in those spaces and, like, backdash reset to back to neutral. It's funny. I think Kai is pretty strong in this version of the game. You know, a lot of people think that way. I kind of... Oh, that was a great throw. I actually think Kai is quite strong in this version of the game. I think this is his best version also, obviously, but... Oh, yeah, dead. 
but yeah, his fireball is good, pokes are good, damage is fine, like, his ability to control a lot of the characters in the game and how they move is excellent. I think he's quite good in this in this version of the game. Nice. I like that choice to let the parry go early before Flash could get in the air and avoid it. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Nice. That was a good pickup. Oh, that was sick. 2S just smoking the wake up DP. That was tight. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Excellent. This is definitely some Kai awareness here to do a little dash block FD. So you get closer and you get the nice punish here. More important in this version of the game when the fireballs are a bit safer and also if it's like DE or whatever the other cancel is, you know, you're just ready for it. That was perfect. Uh oh, that is a punish. It's very rare that Leo Sweep hits that deep too, but... Yeah, a little delay to get the stun dipper. Wake up, dash throw. <laughs> Remember, Leo doesn't have a bash. <laughs> ah, that got me good. Well, I saw that shit as soon as it happened. We gotta burst out immediately. Flash trying to hold on to this heart here. Of course, Razzle looking time to send. That's why decisions like that are so important, though. Anything that can make your opponent feel that way is is not a bad choice sometimes, you know? Oh, yeah, you can see the DP. <laughs> Gonna build the super here. Oh, the he is her. Does not kill though. Always nice Fastly, what up? Insightful commentary on pro matches. It's my kill. Yeah, dead. Nice. That's probably what the combo is supposed to be the first time. 2K into RTL instead of 2K 6H. That makes more sense, right? <laughs> yeah, up 2 0. I think uh, not to any fault of Razo. <clears throat> Excuse me, these matches have been quite close. I think they're playing well, but the larger problem, I think, is that actually it's hard to win these interactions where Kai is so good at controlling space in the mid range and then. On top of that, Flash is not giving away a lot of big free hits that are like, well, big free hits that are really costing rounds, right? Oh, that's, uh, that's really bad. Yeah, I think Super would have probably killed there. I mean, this is, a, this is a hard round to lose, but Flash will get to build some burst back too, which is nice. Still kind of a hard round to lose. Yeah, okay, okay. Unfortunate with the RC. Oh, the 2D is the classic. I think that that was a good choice. We haven't really seen that, but Razo's, um, the wake-up choices have been quite good so far, right? Like, the wake-up dash throw is funny, but also effective, and the wake-up dash DP, the wake-up sweep that time. Oh, that's a misfire. Just takes the throw for positioning. I think you're you're okay taking that there. I don't think that that's a bad choice. Burst, yeah. Yeah, there was already the burst. I love that air dash approach too. I think Raz is doing a really good job of mixing up the approach options here. And no cancel on 5k, 6k that time. Just dash it up. That time Flash takes advantage. Okay, I like that change too. Yeah, don't take the super that time. Oh. Yeah, wake up throw PRC OS. Got a guess here. Ah, that shit is cheap. I love doing that at the end of the round, though. I think that's so smart. Because I think most people there are looking for the overhead, right? And just the, the low tag into the wall splat there is perfect. You don't need a lot of damage, right? You don't need the overhead. So I think that's a really good choice. Oh, DB didn't reach. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. I like how much we see Flash use 2H there, actually. It, like, pushes you back pretty far. It makes I being the pressure a little bit more difficult because you're kind of not used to the slow timing of 2H there. 
And I being against Kai is quite important so that you can smoke uh, the pressure that he's going for. Oh, that was great. That was so... I think that is exactly what Flash expected. Dashing up in here to jam in the far slash to trade, I think that's exactly probably what he was looking for. Something that's really important against Leo, right, or any character that has something like that is trying to get the trade on the fireball. Really good. So notice that Flash is challenging way more here after 5k, 6k. So this time it's far slash, the next time it's 2p. That's If you're Razo, that's a good sign that you can start to stagger maybe with 5k more or start to do like 5k, 6p and then challenge with BP or something else. Like frame traps late with like uh, two, three, six, P or S or whatever the rush move is. I don't remember the the notation. Oh, that was a DP. Oh, that sucks. Basically playing handball, you know. Oh, I was gonna say Flash had the RC meter on deck. Oh, that's a rough scramble to get the best of CSE. You can jump it though. Yeah, I like that air dash back. Flash is like, what the hell? Not dead. Everyone's finished, what up? I made it to Japan after years of waiting. Gonna be teaching English. Gonna go shake Daisyuk's hand personally. Hell yeah, that's good damage. Congrats, by the way. Tell Daisuke I said was good. Oh, RPS here? Mm. One of the best options you can do in positions like that, to be honest, is the, the BRC after. This is really good because... You know, you're kind of forced into a situation like, do you air throw? Do you not air throw? Do you just get blocked to 5p and then you get moved to the ground? This is quite smart. For Taz, what up? Yeah, the charge fireball instead of the RTL. Unfortunate. I don't know that it's an easy round to win anyway, but... Oh, that was a great check, too. Razo's so ready. I'm impressed. That's not easy to, like... Flash has not done that that much. CSE has charged Stun Edge. This big charge fireball, that flat, that one right there. For Terse, what up, Terse? Side Swamp. Unfortunately, no close slash there. Got far slash. Yeah, this is something that is... Really effective against characters that don't have a reversal like Leo. Harassing them with a move like 6H. And then, obviously, most people want to challenge here. So you do DE to frame trap it. This right here is a great response to that. And also, with bar, this is such a bad spot to burst. It's like kind of a habit people have. Like, they get hit by the DP, they want to burst. But, like, you know, not a good spot to burst. Because it's like, you know, people just RC it out of habit, right? Ooh. Oh, the back dash. You can kill here. Yeah. Oh, that was oh, that was the same idea as last time. This is a this RC from Razo is great, by the way. Same situation. Flash was looking for the far slash to kill here on the uh, what's it called the fireball. Then then instead you get the trade situation here. And then air dashes back and lands on it and gets punished. This is a punish on the landing frame. Guy hit right as you land. I think if you FD there and you get forced in the air, then like, you know, it's not so bad, but that is pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, Flash could have done something around the burst maybe at the end, but like the odds of building it on the last hit are pretty low. <laughs> Ouch. That's true. He could have done raw super instead of RC. Oh man. That is rough. I think the the difference in decision making here from Razo, way more confident and willing to force a little bit more. I think there was a lot of respect shown. And then now it's kind of like, all right, all right, all right. Let me just get cozy here and like kind of force these strong options that I want to do. I like I like the adjustment. Razo is not an easy player, I think, to like uh, beat down because they're so adaptable and really hard to like force them not to just you know uh smoke you with like such strong options that you just have to deal with throw yeah for sure this is such a hard spot to win if you're flash mm -hmm. yeah not much to be done like razo is like really confident i feel like in decision making on wake up especially where you're just like what are you gonna do about this position where you have to guess and in terms of controlling the neutral i think like flash did such a good job and you could tell as the set went on, there was like more and more and more confident in the decision makings from Razo. It was like in the beginning, 
Flash's pressure all looks really like airtight stuff to deal with. And then Raza's like willing to challenge and DP and do other stuff. It's hard to play that more controlled style the longer it goes on. And it's tough to beat someone who is so confident and also just plays like so um so adaptable and so fast. Like the decision making is so quick, so perfect most of the time. All right, Flash versus Jonathan Tenney. That. I think he's on the forefront of utilizing BRC in that way. But Flash is also, I think, the best. This is an interesting group, too, by the way. Drunkard, yeah. You can't really do CSE like that against uh, Zato, right? Pretty easy for him to just drunkard. Get the reflect. Good movement there from Flash, by the way. Like, uh, so in this position, when you see a pose, you know that Drunkard's going to come out. And Drunkard, you know, you don't have a choice if you're Jonathan here. Um, this will move Eddie, right? So I like the jump back because not only does it avoid the CSE, but, you know, Frog gets out of the way as well. Yeah, H Vapor Thrust. Look at the damage on this against Zato, by the way. <laughs> oh, you're a piece of shit, Flash I Metro. You know that? I, when Kai players do this, it gets me so mad. When Kai players do this and don't RC... And then it hits 2K after. You're a motherfucker. <laughs> what is your problem? Oh man. Yeah, Jonathan loves doing that on defense. The jump back uh, BRC. The thing is that it's not that good against Flash either because we've talked about how Flash does the close edge jump cancel pressure a lot as well. So he ends up being in the air. Ooh, stuffed Eddie. That is really bad. Eddie gets hit here and Zato in the corner. Yeah, this is a horrendous position. Trying to bait the throw. Again, the late up back. Jonathan likes to do jump FD, which, as you can see, all the up backs. Yeah, he's really scouting it a lot. That. That is uh, not working out so much. I kind of want to see Jonathan start to challenge a bit more instead. 5P a bit more, maybe early throw tech. I think early throw is very good against players who like want to pressure in this way. I think you're dead. Yeah. Yeah, Kai's neutral is incredibly good. His buttons and fireball movement. He can't be overconfident here. His special moves, they're also good for him to control this, the pace of the ground. Oh, that time the frog did hit. No wall break. Yeah, I like I like air dash forward FD to respect the 6P option from Zato. Oh, oh, that was great. Super ready for it. Stun dippered the drunkard. Oh, I like that pressure too. Yeah, 5P again. If you're Jonathan here, you're you gotta change, I think, how you're pressuring a bit, maybe. He he is not challenged exactly. You gotta you gotta start 5P in a bit more, I think, and you have to throw early throw or do something else. Oh punish. Not too big of a punish. He could have done five H and a stun dipper. Yeah, I think I think with how experienced Flash is, like you know, he's fought against Eddie in so many versions of Guilty Gear. His decision making against this character is so sharp. I think if you fought against Zato before, you're much more comfortable than people who have not with dealing with Eddie. Look at this movement, by the way. Waits, you know, a pose is coming. Jumps, air dash, FD, just in case the frogs there or something. Get the Get the uh, pressure. Look at the combo off this. This does so much, by the way. Yeah. I actually kind of like that he didn't do super. Because uh, you don't really have to in that case, right? I love that. That pressure is so good. No super, I think, because you want the meter in neutral. Also, I love this pressure. When he blocks this... You know, you put, get put in shock state. Means that he can do flip kick and then pressure against you. So run up 5k, flip kick, take the throw after. Yeah, Flash is playing this matchup really well. And I think I think the speed at which he plays it and the confidence is probably tough to deal with if you're Jonathan. There's probably not that many Kai players who are as solid, uh, what's it called? As solid as Flash and as confident dealing with the options that he's presenting. You know what I mean? It's tough. Yeah, that's true. When you dash with Kai and you do jump FD, it changes your... Oh, that was going to be a lot of damage, yeah. It changes your um, height that you approach at as well. 
Yeah, so that's something that you see Kai players do quite a bit. But at the same time, it also means you'll block, which is nice too. The side effect of it. Yeah, Flash plays so, like, so confident, and also his play is so good. Like, it's so tough to deal with. His neutral is excellent. His decision making is really good. I think his strategy is super smart too. Like, you know, a lot of people think about the game in certain ways. I love Sacred Edge. Just delete Eddie, get a ton of chip. Oh, that was perfect. Like, a lot of people play Kai, but to play somebody who's like fundamentals and strategy are so polished and like really experienced in this way it's really hard flash has like unique opinions about the game too like compared to most people most people have whatever opinion they have and then you ask flash and he'll say something that's like completely different I'll be like no i think everybody is just they think this because they're i don't know they think this this and that but i don't think it's true at all i think this is how the game is so like his opinions are usually always you know founded in his own thoughts about the game and you can tell i think in how he plays oh he air blocked it that sucks He's gonna get fucking deleted too. It did so much damage. He air blocked the uh, charge dust, which made it not as negative. Man, oh man, he ran him over. A beat down. He played so aggressive and confident and fast, you know? Like, man. All right. Last match in the group here should be right here Razo versus Jonathan. Yeah, Kai is good. I think a lot of people are warming up to how strong Kai is in this version of the game. Uh oh, you got sandwiched already. This is an interesting matchup to watch too. Mostly because I think, um, y you know, with a character like Leo, who's a little bit more, I don't know how to, how to describe him, like chunky with his movement. You know, dealing with some of the options prevented by, by a character like Zato can be a little annoying sometimes, I think, right? But at the same time, having the defensive DP and tools that Leo has is pretty nice compared to a lot of characters. Oppose is actually too deep in the corner there. You also explode on defense. Nice. Okay, FD's away. I like reversal pierce, actually. Oh, the IB and then challenge to kill Eddie. Oh, that was slightly mistimed, although it was the right idea. Man, Jonathan has hit Razo 87 times in this game. I'll tell you what. Yeah, this is going to be chip soon. Oh, a little early on the command throw. This is a pretty bad spot to be in. Oppose. Yeah. The thing is, too, is that whenever you block something, you build gauge to FD the next thing. So as long as you block like a normal into a special move, often you can prevent yourself from being chipped, you know? Mm. Kind of a weird a weird position to be, too, because, like, you see, this is the position where Eddie dies. This is, like, every character, though, right? When Eddie dies, so the burst right here, Eddie's gone, you, you feel the need, right? You're like, okay, I need to do something. I gotta hit Zato right now. If I don't, it's over, you know what I mean? So, like, I feel this urge to chase and stuff, and then when Zato gets out, like... Isn't it just the most annoying thing ever? You're like, fuck. <laughs> You're like, isn't that the most annoying thing ever? You're like, damn it, he lived. Side swamp, good block. I think it was a little, it didn't hit immediately probably too, which helped. The up backing, man. The up backing and pressure from Jonathan so much. I think if you see that, you just start staggering your pressure. You know what I mean? Just I can't stand five, Yeah, exactly. Razo made a good adjustment on terms of how to do a pressure against Jonathan already, I think. Berserker, what up? See how Razo just like keeps going tap, 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 tap. Because FDing, the weakness of it is that if you're just trying to jump back FD, jump back FD, jump back FD, whenever you block something in the air, you become more negative, right? So it's not very good actually in that case. Uh, against that style of pressure. I like what... Oh, that was smart, too. I was going to say, I like what Jonathan did here. Uh, on the oppose, he did 5P Drunkard, and then he got the Pierce, and then and then uh, he didn't get the combo, but he ended up getting the overhead and reposition. I love breaking the law here. Just gets out of there. <laughs> that was smart. Oh. Knockdown, meaty drill, 2k does not want to get DP'd. 
No drunker. This little yeah, I was gonna say, oh this will help with the fireball. That was perfect. You always think you can make it. You know what I mean? You're always like, if I just go right now, I'm gonna reach before Eddie recovers. Definitely. Thanks for the buffs, by the way. Oh, punish. No Eddie gauge, though. Yeah. That was good to optimize with what you could do. Wow, that was cool. That jumpy actually pushed Razo back into the oppose. Mm -hmm. Not much you can do. You're in the air dash, so you're not going to be able to recover. Falling mix up. Oh, and it actually hit the 2D out of the air. Good challenge. Got to be aware on, on Piercer in situations like that where you can hit a button. Okay, DP for the knockdown. Yeah. I like that. No ankle breakers here. You got to be ready to challenge. I think that's the thing about Jonathan's offense that Razo is capitalizing on in the first game, right? Which is that Jonathan was sort of doing like a lot of just jump back, FD, jump back, FD, jump back, FD. And if that's the style of defense you're playing, then, you know, you could really take advantage of... Oh, what in the hell? To beat the throw? That was pretty... That was a gangster-ass decision. Um, you know... It's pretty important to represent mash and other options on defense besides just jump back FD. I think Jonathan would actually be benefit from some early throw. That's like the one thing that I think he could do, just mash throw on wake up. I know he doesn't want to do it, but sometimes I think he, he maybe needs to. Or, or I like 5P as well, but I think you need a little bit of both. I was gonna say, are we gonna see more instant air dash from Razzle? They definitely kept it grounded. They didn't lose that one round going to Oh, the a little early. Thankfully the frog saved the day, and you can sword super for the setup here, you yeah. know. A little far. I mean gets the five D anyway. There's not a, yeah, I was gonna say Razzo you got a burst because at that position you're just in a bad spot anyway. Yeah, nice to not hit a button when you saw drunkard or not drunkard uh, pose. Razzle's not really been hit by a lot of the setup so far, actually. Oh, nice. Eddie's gone, though. Throw again? No, I like the back dash. That was a great option. Goes low that time. I love it. I love the low. Going low into the drill there. I love it. Because you don't need the, the 5D to hit. You don't want to give Leo a chance to DP or anything either, right? Let's see here. When they're at their most dangerous. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, this group is actually a lot less close in terms of the score set than the other one, right? Or actually, I guess the other, the other one had a 3 0 in the beginning as well. <laughs> it's funny to watch that because Leo just stands there with actually no threat. I think if you're Jonathan, you just probably unsummon, right? <laughs> I don't think, because you can't really do much. You can't break the guard. What up, Sage? That's just how it goes. Randall, what up, Randall? Had a great weekend. Yeah, I was sleeping. Nice. You're dead. Into the super immediately. Just wanted to get it over with right there, Jonathan. Didn't have any burst to lock out or anything like that. Yeah, I was recovering. Doing their doing their due diligence. No unsummon? Oh, I wonder if that was supposed to be it. Oh, that's bad. Okay, it could have been worse. It could have been a bigger pickup. Damn. You know, Jonathan hadn't done that that much. Oh, baited. I can't believe Razo committed to the burst in that position. It was a good bait from Jonathan, I think, probably, but I'm surprised. That was a big burst to give up. Because if you get hit here, yeah. If you get hit here and you're in this position with no burst now, I mean, this is so bad. Ah, you hate to see it. Oh, lost the meter. That sucks, though, huh? Damn, that was tragic. Did you see that? He did the sword super. And then he didn't get the hit on the sword super because Eddie broke the wall. But then the super came out, so he lost the meter for the super and got the super gauge back. That's unfortunate. Oh, no, the 
So you don't get the hard knockdown or the hits from the super, but you get the Eddie gauge back. Man, has Razzle been hit by a command throw this? Oh. That was good. They dash under and get the cross up there. Yeah, comboed out of the air. Damn. I'm impressed by how often Razzle got out of the command grabs. I'm going to be honest with you. A close set for sure in the set that like in the sense that like each game was pretty close down to like the last hits. I think the burst in that last one is pretty rough for that reason though, eh? So this is the bracket after the groups are done. And the two round robins lead from a top six to a top four. I think the format got all messed up in this because if you guys don't know, it's supposed to be Canada and Mexico also sent people. And there was like, you know, more people. So the groups would be bigger and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. So the bracket would make sense. But instead of having the representatives from Canada and Mexico, they're like, well, COVID's going ham and getting people in and out of those countries is kind of hard. So we're just going to do people from the U.S. instead. It ended up just being like America finals meant actually just the USA. <laughs> Yeah, it was Pep and Remy, and then it was Chitu and Yixi Lancer, right? Yeah. I don't know why that was such a long break. I wonder what happened. My guess is that they maybe the, the announcement had to be at a certain time, so they were like trying to fill for the announcement. Remember what happened during the Street Fighter finals, where like it was very clear they were like, all right, we gotta we need to wait until the Street Fighter announcement's gonna happen at X time. Maybe it was the same kind of a thing. Enjoying the way he's approached this so far. The you can build an entire Ikea desk and how long the break was? Maybe you can. I, there's no way. OTG drill, empty low. Oh. I wonder if that was supposed to bait the super. Jonathan just chilled. Or maybe YRC. I like that. Big fan of sliding opposed command ground. The least fit, my least favorite part about when I played Eddie, I hated this shit. When I did meaty drill... And I wanted to do the falling mix up and they just got fucking hit by the mix up. I was like, D or the drill. I'm like, dude, that's a, like, I didn't even get to do my cool mix up. Enough to get the Sharknado and then through the wall, Jonathan Tenne with round. They just got hit by the drill. Yeah, these might've been trying like a wake up super or something and just got like a missed input. I'm not sure what, but he ate Oh, Pose could have so. almost eaten it up Wait, there. Ooh, actually just did rage for that dust. You can see Daze does a oh. lot of FD on the first. A little bit of a uh, miss from Jonathan. I, I wonder if it's because Eddie was running out. Runs up, sends it with the 5D. Thing is, is this funny because in this game, like, Zato uses no 6K really, right? But his 5D is so good despite that. Drill, unsummon? No, it doesn't even unsummon. Just takes the pressure. Ugh, this is rough. I feel like, you know, you would expect actually that Days would be pretty comfortable here but i remember when i was watching him stream before this he kind of said like i don't really have a deliberate game plan against eddie he sort of said like i kind of just you know play like the the most basic style and he's like and the problem is every zato player does like their own style of pressure and like decisions so like trying to come up with something against the character is kind of hard because they all play so different and i only just do my baseline game plan that's not good it was it's funny because he said like it's it's not good that i that's kind of how it is but like that's all i have so like what am i supposed to do damn that's unfortunate because now he still has eddie gauge and he sandwiched it well there too and the opposes there and he's got meter to prc yeah yeah days is just like he's like yeah i don't really have like like a really practice game plan against uh eddie compared to like a lot of other characters wow that was so good <laughs> that also did a shit ton of damage and he needs to build it back up. He'll use his meter for the RCs <coughs> as a way to buy the time to build up the oh. other gauge. Yeah, Sorry about that. Oh, that's good. That's a good start. He, it really, I mean, you can tell also, yeah. With how Jonathan defends, I think you really need to hammer him with a lot of 2S probably. Oh. That's it. He really waited a long time to get, go for that mix-up. You see that? Empty jump low, or empty jump 5P, then taps low, then does 5D. Like, it's kind of like he really delayed where the mix-up came there. 
Okay, I like the whip punish. Immediate burst from Jonathan is probably worth it because I think in neutral you you sort of are okay with her having to reset and deal with the stuff she's got to deal with. It's funny because, you know, unless you kill Eddie consistently or you move around him well, you're probably going to have a bad time against Otto, you know? I don't know if the issue for Days is his, his ability to kill Eddie or if it's just like the defense that gives him a problem. I don't know what it is. Yeah, that was pretty rough. He exploded. I guess I haven't really seen him kill Eddie in neutral very much yet. Ow. That move is excellent, by the way. His 5H is so good. Yeah, he is, he's been hit by 6P. He's approaching quite a lot. It really feels like his approach is a little bit too uh, rhythmic. Like, I think he kind of always is ready for it. Yeah, delay it as long as you can to try to get the Eddie gauge back. That is bad. You're dead. I really love, though, if you saw in that last Eddie sequence, he manually did the frog, which actually gave him enough meteor to still have a pose afterwards. That's just good management from Jonathan. No unsummon? I'm kind of surprised. It's all magic to me. He's just doing jutsus over there. It really feels like Daze does not have a lot of good... Uh, a good understanding of what he needs to do in the neutral, actually, right? It seems like he's kind of not sure how to approach. Not necessarily his fault, I think, in the sense that, like, approaching against excellent Zato players is hard, right? It's very hard to do, especially if you're used to Zato players who just let you kill Eddie over and over. You know what I mean? Sometimes that just happens. Nice. DP was great there. Again, I think this pressure, you have to hammer Jonathan with, like, Pressure of this style. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. It all worked out. You kind of have to hammer Jonathan with delayed pressure because he's up backing. He's doing delayed jump FB. I think that's a good adjustment. But yeah, a lot of Zato players will like give give Eddie away. You know what I mean? They'll give, they'll give you Eddie for free. And if they're going to give you Eddie for free, you don't really learn how exactly you're supposed to navigate within a neutral. Goes, right when you're scrambling and you're like oh it's for sure my burst is gonna hit in a scramble and then that's the one time they just don't get in your face yeah. do we not have game audio oh, but these five D's, bro. He's yeah. i think we're back right. now yeah and that's the, that's the danger since one of the things that makes zato so scary is just when he traps you in the corner like that yeah, it's you can't punish that as Zato there unless you IB and throw. Games like this, right? the mix -ups, nice. The mix -ups. Oh, that was nice for a second. Oh, not so bad. Not so bad. He doesn't have any gauge. Again, that feels like... It seems like every time there's a break where Eddie dies and we go back to neutral. How many times have we seen this? Days is like, okay, there's no Eddie. I'm going to dash in. And then he just gets hit by 6P. I feel like we've seen that so much. That 6P has hit him so many times, it feels like. I I wonder if he just needs a little bit more of, like, jump, like, empty jumps to bait it, or if he needs, like, dash up 2D, or if he needs... Yeah. These 6Ps have really been rough. Great pickup, frog at the end. Super dead. Is this gonna kill... Almost definitely does. Amorphous Man. coming through. The shark takes a bite out of crime. Yeah, it's been rough. I feel like he doesn't have a good plan there. I feel him though, because I talk about this a lot, but everybody does this. Eddie dies, and you're like, yes, Eddie's dead. Now I can go in, and then he just goes, and then he six P's you, and you're like, fuck. So I wonder if he should be dashing in and then waiting and letting and trying to whip punish or dash, then air dash, dash, and then jump FD or something like You know what I mean? Like, it's it's hard. I wonder what the approach difference should be there for days. I also think that it seemed like he was not able to kill Eddie when Jonathan was controlling him very consistently. I don't know if that's a geo problem, an experience thing, or like John, the way Jonathan was playing was hard for him to deal with. I wonder what it was. That certainly is a very stark difference between the sets we saw him play in groups where against Soul and Nago, he looks so comfortable, you know what I mean? Dash 2 house is maybe not bad. It might be a bit slow, though. It, it might get beat by Drill or 2P or something. I mean, it's going to be similar to, you know, how we were talking about... Dash of Fukio is the classic. This is, you know, these two play each other a lot. I've seen them play Axel versus Nago a lot and also Kai versus Nago. I've seen these two play many times. Ooh, Ooh not quite in range for the punish. 
I love the change in speed and the pressure from Flash. You notice as soon as, as um, Otashi I beat his pressure, he did the pressure fast that time. So instead of delaying, he just went fast, 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 fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see this? First bit of pressure here, right? You see how he's ready and he just IBs, 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 right? So then Flash is like, oh shit, all right. He's just going to IB all this, boom, boom, boom. Hammer him low, right? Just just do like close slash 2S, 5H, right? And do the same thing here again. So that if he's trying to IB in these situations, you know, you can try to catch him low when he's trying to IB whatever you're doing in between his IB attempts. See how he's getting hit by this? Probably trying to IB and missing the timing. That's why I like that Flash has changed his pressure to deal with the IB so well. Yeah, he immediately adjusted. Uh oh. Maybe I can win with the wrong buttons, but I'll see. Oh, I can't? Okay, let's go ahead and change the buttons now. See, God, we game everything, man. Fighting players game everything. That's pretty funny. Give us any chance. So, one of the things I've been noticing. But yeah, I like the adjustments to deal with the IBs already. CSC is actually a surprisingly not easy thing for Nago to deal with. We talked about being able to dash block those things, get close to Kai, but that's not a privilege that Nagoriki has. He has no dash. And now the stun dipper opening him up, bullying him in the corner once again. Ooh. Oh, why is he catching him out of the area? Oh, God. Oh, I think 5H, he had to do that there. He's also very close to popping. Punish, beautiful. He was ready for it. I mentioned that earlier when I was talking about Geo. Characters like Kai can stun Dipper. For Jay, what up, Jay? The blood's still quite high. Oh, the backdash. And if you're Flash, that's like your biggest concern probably in this matchup. The backdash is tough to deal with. These trades are good for Flash. Yeah. Yeah, you can clone CSE, but again, it's not always like, you know, you got to commit the blood to beat it from full screen. It's a lot of blood. If you think he's going to CSE and like you're, you're like waiting for it and stuff, it's still a lot to give away. I forgot about that. They said during this that if whoever won this would win the tournament. I forgot about that. It didn't even combo. Yeah, you can. It's of course, you can do blood in, or not blood, uh, you can do clone into Fukio to beat it, but you don't always get it. Like, he might, he might bait you into thinking he's going to do CSC and then he doesn't. Oh, God, he's going to do a lot of damage. And there you see right there, that's the reason why Flash will wake up with the Ride the Lightning, because Natasha likes to go for the throw or, a, or close Slash mix up. Sometimes he'll throw regular projectiles, sometimes he'll do CSC. That was probably DP. It's particularly good on high blood, though, yeah. I mean, that's where you're going to use it the most, probably. Throw a button he tried there. Whatever Flash tried to do got slowed down and... See right there, I think he was probably looking for a fireball. The nice thing about clone though is even if they don't throw a fireball, you're still fine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like even if you just do clone into Fukio from far away, man, that is so hard to deal with. The backdash is so good, and in situations like that, that confirm is so fast, it's tough to burst it. Forward, just waiting, trying to see if Flash goes with that ride the lightning yeah, that we talked about. Yeah, he was He knows too. Yeah, these two have, I mean, the intel I got was from the set that these two play. Nice. Oh, paper thrust right through. That was actually a good, a good response. CSE, he was in the air, so. And again, his blood is pretty hot. Oh, oh, unlucky if you're Hotashi. That is so unlucky if you're Hotashi. Ah, uh, that sucks. It's not gonna kill. You're totally fine to get hit by this. It doesn't matter. It resets the position and puts you back to neutral. Yeah, perfect. Doesn't matter. That hit doesn't matter that much. Like, even though that wall break happens, if you're a Hotashi, you don't care, right? You'll take it. You'd rather have the wall broken than be in the corner still dealing with, dealing with the uh, pressure from Kai. Him doing charge stun edge and then doing whatever after and then you get smoked. Like... Like wall break is great. You'll take the wall break every time. Oh, he committed to 6P early. I wonder what he was looking for. Maybe a far slash or something. A lot of blood back. Yeah, look at how fast the blood's going down, by the way. Now he can just send it with clone or whatever he wants to do. Oh. That was a great empty jump into the whip punish, by the way. Did you see this? Look at this movement. 
Like situations like this, great example of using your movement to bait something. Six P. Oh, nice. That was good from Flash. Use his own RC to get away from the six P. Oh, that classic. And he caught that back dash. That was well played. It's because Hotachi loves the back dash on wake up, right? So if you have something that catches it. It's pretty important. The only problem is then he'll start challenging on wake up or he'll start like throwing. Just like immediate like reversal throw. Ah, uh, he's a little late. I love that challenge too. I think he's like so confident Hotashi's gonna commit there because Hotashi needs to. He's down so much. Same thing. This will hit. Is this fast enough to catch? It is, okay. Yeah, you have to be careful against characters who have fast reversal supers. Up close like that. 6P? Oh, I wonder if he tried. Oh, no, he was hitting 2S, it looked like. Yeah. It didn't end up mattering, though. Situations like that are interesting because Hotashi actually forces spots where he's gonna pop a lot and then he wins in the scramble anyway and he doesn't end up dying because of the pop it happens a lot wow he did almost get a wild combo off of that oh no now the bite's coming through that means the blood is draining and the range on that it takes the hard knockdown oh. kind of an ugly setup nice IB throw is great there good challenge on the Fukio up too I love how often he is ready for that it feels like most of the time Hotashi is like trying to move in Flash usually has a response ready like ooh that hurt Yeah, I take the damage. Oh. Why? Come on, man. Yeah, clone, because why not, right? Uh, uh, if he would have wall broken, he would have died. But yeah, not quite. He just dies when he pops, is what they say about Nago for sure. <laughs> Super? Nah. Good damage, too. That's like, you'll really take that when you get to keep meter here to do Stun Dipper or Sacred Edge. Oh, no combo. That's unfortunate. You kind of needed that if you're Hotashi because of the blood, I think. And the knockdown, you're dead. It's unfortunate because if he gets the combo there, then like he gets the knockdown, the blood's gone, he's chilling. Much better. Back boost, what up, back boost? Yeah, he's been doing that a lot. That's uh, clean 40%. Oh, even more now. That's a classic Hotashi. Whiff some shit, make the best. The Hotashi special is like you whiff some shit, like Beyblade there, and then you just like looks good. This is a Hotashi special round if I've ever seen one. We've all been. I've I've been there. That's a Hotashi round if I've ever seen it. We've all been there. Anybody who's played Hotashi has lost a round like that. Everybody gets hit by close slash, close slash. Beyblade does not. Re yeah, the recovery on Beyblade is so fast. The situations like that are really surprising. This is gonna hurt so much because of the wall break too. That sucks. No kill. Yeah. And the blood is low too. It's gonna go down because of the uh, what's it called? Uh, challenge. The thing is, is that so many of those times Hotashi was just like blocking and then backdashing, blocking and then like doing something else. So I like that he started challenging because you know you're kind of assuming that he's not gonna he's gonna keep backdashing or doing something else. So this is what the bracket looks like. Loses brackets down there. Ugh, I'm getting tired, chat. <clears throat> I could feel it. We got top four. Maybe I should save top four for tomorrow. Not a bad idea. We could we could top four it up tomorrow, and then I could do some gaming.